Okay, so here we are, 8.8 .8, conic sections, ellipses and hyperbolas. All right, so um, just going to get kind of cruising along here. Now, they, they really don't go into a lot of detail on anything in this lesson being the last one. I don't know if they were tired of writing and they just didn't want to talk much about things or whether they just feel that those of you that are in managerial life and social sciences really don't need all the details here. But either way, makes life um, a little bit easier since this is our last chapter or our last section. So let me go ahead and put a couple pictures up here. Okay, so I pretty much just put that whole first page up here just to give you an idea of what they're looking at when they're talking about an ellipse. They're talking about um, our two focus points, okay? And uh, that is at some x um, distance. And on this one, with the center point being at the uh, um, origin, our, our y values are zero. So whether we go right or left, we don't go up or down any <clears throat> from the origin here. Now later on, we'll shift these a little bit. But for right now, we're just looking at zero, zero. And one of the things about an ellipse that is true is that the distance here, d1, to a point on the ellipse and distance 2 from that point down to the other focus, that is going to be a certain distance. So let's say it's 12. Then it doesn't matter. If we take our line from here to here and here to here, when we add those up, we're going to get 12. Or from here to here and here to here, when we add those up, we're going to get 12. So we're going to get a constant number. This length plus this length will always equal the same number for that particular ellipse. All right, so um, the uh, length here, the line segment through the foci that ends at its intersection with the ellipse, so like from here to here, is called the major axis, and from here to here is called the minor axis. Now sometimes you get one like this, where the major axis is vertical, and the minor axis is um, horizontal, but they will always be perpendicular, and um, you know some of them will be squished more than others. I mean, you know, you'll run into some ellipses that may be, you know, I'm a terrible ellipse drawer, but you know what I mean as far as squished or made um, fatter. So it just kind of depends. So this is a horizontal ellipse and this is a vertical ellipse because the major axis is vertical the major axis is horizontal okay so what we have below here is the uh, standard forms for the equations of ellipses and I wrote a little note here this is for horizontal ellipses and this is for um, vertical ellipses so we'll, we will be looking a lot at uh, these two formulas here as we cruise through this section. So let's go ahead and uh, you do example one. I'm going to leave this little drawing here with our formulas over here. And uh, example one says that we have this, whoops, we have this equation. And the equation is 9x squared plus 25y squared equals 225. Okay, so one of the things you want to notice here is our constant, our term, or our term that's just a number, okay, with no letters. The constant here on both of these is 1. So that is a key thing to solving these is, um, and graphing them, is to put it in the standard form that last part here, the right of the equal sign, has to be a 1. And um, in order to graph it, we have to get it in one of these two formulas, depending on whether it's a horizontal or vertical. Okay, so I should be able to look at this here and uh, put it in the right form and then determine just from that form right away whether it's vertical or horizontal. Okay, so let's first of all put this in the right format, and then we can determine pretty quickly whether it's a vertical or a horizontal ellipse. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to try to change that 225 to a 1. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to divide each term by 225. Okay, we divide this out. We don't want to um, fail to reduce this. So we reduce it and we get x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Okay, so that's the first step that we do is uh, make sure this uh, part right here turns into a 1. So do we divide each term on the other side by that and we get it in this form. Okay, so once you get it in that form, you can look here um, and very quickly be able to decide whether it's a vertical or a horizontal. If the number under the x squared is the largest number, then it's going to be an ellipse with the x distance being bigger than the y distance. Okay, If these two numbers were switched around, if the 25 were here and the 9 were here, then the y value would be bigger, so therefore it would be this way. So the distance from the vertex here to the vertex here would be the longest. So it's a real easy way to quickly uh, be able to determine whether it's a horizontal or a vertical. And then pretty much all we do is uh, we know that it's going to be centered at the origin because, and we'll get into um, a little bit more about um, how you can tell real quickly um, in a little bit, but right now one of the ways you can tell is if there's nothing added or subtracted to the x here or the y here. If there's something added to both of these, then there's a shift over and up or down. Okay, But since there isn't anything added or subtracted, we know that the origin is the, uh, the center of the ellipse. Alright, so um, what this tells us is where the, the endpoints or the vertices are of this ellipse. So let me get a, a graph here. Okay, so I pulled up the standard form of equations and found that my A and my B are the vertices, the endpoints, okay, the furthest we go out. So where we, um, this is a horizontal one, so we're going to use this formula right here. And I know that my A uh, squared is 25. Well, if my A squared is 25, my A then would be plus or minus 5, okay, meaning the direction that I go here. So I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be here, okay? And this here is my b squared. So my b is going to be plus or minus 3, okay? And then I can use my awesome artistic skills and kind of come up with a nice smooth curve for my ellipse that kind of looks eggy shaped. And uh, there's my answer. So it's not really very difficult to, uh, to graph these once we get them in the correct form. Okay, so here is the uh, equations for an ellipse based on vertical and horizontal shifts. Now remember in the last one we just had an x squared and a y squared and I said if anything was added or subtracted it would mean that we shifted. So this here, this h means we're going to shift h units and this means we're going to shift up or down k units. Okay, so horizontally and vertically and that's one of the ways that I remember uh, which one is horizontal. Is horizontal obviously starts with an h. Now vertical does not start with a k but it's the only one left over. So I know that K represents vertical because H represents horizontal. All right, so the, the, the shifting is going to go back to its opposite. If this is X minus, if, for example, this was an X, come on, Gary, X minus 4, and that was a squared, that means this is going to shift to the right four units. Okay, it's going to go the opposite direction you would think because we're looking at 
what makes this zero. Four makes it zero, so it shifts to the right. Same way with my k. Y minus four would mean it would go up four units because what makes that zero? Positive four. And actually, when I say that it shifts, what I'm saying is that the center point of the ellipse is the is what this is shifting okay so if the center is shifting then everything else is shifting the foci and the vertex and you know all of that is shifting too but this top number just tells you which part of the ellipse is shifting and in this case it's just going to be the uh, the center point so it tells you that the center point here is not the origin it's four four whatever makes this zero whatever makes this zero okay so let's go ahead and do example two and uh, I'm just going to do this in the next video because I'm not sure how long that'll take and then we'll give it a shot